Halo bro, ada yang pernah nanya sama gua beberapa orang Siapa sih yang ngajarin lu soal jam tangan atau horologi? Siapa inspirasi lu? Dan siapa sih temen lu yang sering lu sebut-sebut yang katanya ada di US? Terus siapa juga yang ngeracunin lu soal microbrand? Dan banyak pertanyaan-pertanyaan serupa yang sering banget gua terima Nah makanya hari ini sekalian gue mau say hi, udah lama juga gue nggak ngobrol-ngobrol sama dia Sekalian gue mau kenalin sama kalian siapakah orang ini Dan gue set up video call sama dia sekitar jam 10 Ya, nanti gue bakal tayangin videonya Sekarang jam setengah 10 lebih Chattingnya udah standby Gue tinggal nunggu respon dia doang, oke? Okay? Sambil nunggu, ngerin intro dulu, oke okay, bro? How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Good. Nice hat, by the way. Thank you very much. All the right. uh, Nashville Predators What? ice hockey team. I I played ice hockey for uh, 25 years, and and now my sons play. Okay. So what is in your wrist? Uh, Ulster. Ah, I've is seen the, that. I've seen that. Ulster, you. A, is, yeah. Is that brand new in your website? Yes. Uh, about a month. Yeah. I received uh, two two shipments of them, and both uh -huh. sold out within a few hours. Wow! So this watch this watch was the watch that uh, Richard Dreyfuss wore in the movie Jaws uh, when he played uh, Matt okay. Hooper. And uh, the company went out of business during the quartz crisis, just like uh, so many other watch companies. Uh -huh. And um, so a gentleman uh, revived the company back in 2014. Mm -hmm. And he did a reissue of the actual 1975 Alston Autoscat. I and, see. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. That's good, man. Right? Yeah, good. I, I received uh, my first two shipments of them. I received literally sold out in five hours. Wow. Anyway, let me introduce you to my subscribers. Sure. You know, there's a bunch of guys in Indonesia asking me questions. Who is actually inspired you or teaching you in the world of horology? Here's the guy. His name is John Cale from United States, right? So let me do a quick introduction. He's running the website called watchcouch.com, right? Correct. It's a microbrand website. He's a very solid guy in horology, and he's running his own YouTube channel. I follow him since he started the channel, right? And now he's building another channel, which is what we're going to talk about. Right, John? Yeah. Please do introduction from your side. Yeah, sure. So, um... You know, my name is John Keel. I, I started in the watch industry in 1999, uh, which tells you how old I am. Uh, <laughs> very shortly after, I became friendly with a guy who um, who became a very, very good friend of mine, Stephen Butler. He was uh, he was the owner of Chrono Swiss USA, so he was the importer of at the time the German uh, slash Swiss brand right. uh, Chrono. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I really didn't know a whole lot about watches and. Um, The first time I had seen a Chrono Swiss Opus, uh, which is a skeletonized chronograph, mm -hmm. uh, I was just blown away. I was fascinated. So oh, to really? see this mechanical movement straight uh -huh. through the front of the watch, ticking and operating and, uh -huh. and working in a way that would have worked 50 or 60 or 70 years ago, wow. uh, it just fascinated me. Yeah, I just uh, I just fell in love with watches, so I I ended up joining the watch industry in late 1999, maybe early 2000, and up until 2014, I spent my entire career in the high end, uh, selling anything from tag wire up to watches for a half a million dollars. All right. And uh, and I I you know I was all over the country. I I, I covered Canada, North America, you know mm -hmm. the United States, Canada, and the Caribbean. So I I was traveling perpetually. I realized that. 
that wasn't the kind of life I wanted to live. I left there in 2014. 2014, you left the company and you started a new business, right? I did. I started my own business, but it wasn't it wasn't Watch Gauge at the time. So I, I sold I sold my entire watch collection. I sold Audemars, my Audemars Piguet, oh, my really? Suta. Wow. I sold my entire collection except for the really sentimental pieces. And I raised about $120,000 from selling my watch collection. <laughs> When I, when I did that, when I sold my collection, when I started my business, because I always wanted to work for myself. I always wanted to be my own boss. So what I ended up doing was I ended up falling in love and learning about micro brands. So um, that's actually my question for you. You know, when, yeah. when actually you start micro brand? Yeah, so it's really kind of funny because, again, I, I didn't feel comfortable spending a lot of money on, on watches because I was trying to build a business and it didn't make any sense. Uh -huh. So I found online, just browsing around in the watch forums and the watch uh, blogs and things like that, I, I started seeing these articles written on brands that are micro brands. And I'm like, gee, what, what are micro brands? And the best... The best description, I don't know about over by in, in Indonesia, but here in the United States, micro brews are a really big thing. Micro, like small beer companies, right? They start in somebody's garage and they become big beer companies. And I'm a big fan of beer, by the way. All right. <laughs> um, but so, mm -hmm. and I ended up having four or five at, at the time, four or five micro brands. And I'm like, wow, of the four or five I had, I think. All but one were really fantastic. One one was, I paid, I don't know, $700 for one, and it was a piece of garbage. I kept doing research, and I realized that there was nowhere online that represented micro brands, meaning a space or a store where you can go, and everything on there is of good quality, good design, um, and, and worth the money you're spending, whether it's a $200 watch or a $1,000 watch. Right. So that's where the idea of watch gauge came into play. And for me... It's, it's just a great way to stay in the industry mm -hmm. and do something a bit different than everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the, I'm the first guy in the United States to... When is that? When you start the watch count? September 1st, 2017 was the day that... The first day I, I turned the website on and, mm -hmm. uh, and I got my first sale within the first hour the website was live. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's I, great. That's you know, story. I, I, had, I had hyped up the mm -hmm. fact that watch gauge was going to be going live. And w when it did, I sent out, mm -hmm. you know, some social media posts and uh, yeah, I think the first day uh, within the first hour and what's really neat is on my phone. When I, when I make it, when I, when a sale comes through on the website, it makes like a cash register sound like a, a, a ding, like a cha-ching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a, uh, it's one of my favorite sounds that this phone makes is uh, right, when so it ching when, when, when it ching and then you said, all right, bingo there. <laughs> yeah, made a sale. <laughs> anyway, that's great. Okay, uh, next question, John. One tricky question for me, Swiss brand versus micro brand. Okay, I... I I get this question, and for me, I I love all watches. Mm -hmm. I love watches that are fifty dollars and not made in Switzerland. And I love watches that are fifty thousand. And I love watches everywhere in between. You know, for me, I, I tend to enjoy the micro brand space much more these days. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I I think that there's a lot more of a story with micro brands. Mm -hmm. I think that. There are more genuine individuals behind micro brands. Okay. And, you know, I spent 15 or 16 years selling the high end luxury in the Swiss. Mm -hmm. and, and I certainly don't know everything. However, it got to a point where I felt like there wasn't a lot to learn. Okay. Very often. Where in the micro brand space, I feel like there's a lot of newness, a lot of things that are coming out, and a lot of things that are happening. So I feel that sense of, of learning. Uh, right, much, right. much more in the micro brand space. And okay. it, it gets you excited when you're learning new about new watches or new models or new brands coming out. And and that's what I seem to uh, enjoy the most these days. But but I certainly still have a ton of love for for the high end. The, you know, like I've got my grandfather's Breitling. I've got uh, oh, okay. I've got an Omega uh, mm -hmm. Speedmaster Gemini 4 that uh, wow. is very special to me and I love. I certainly still have a collection for All sure. Right. That's good. That's good. So, I mean, 
I've never owned a Rolex. In 20 years in the watch industry, I've never owned a Rolex. I think I and, saw your video with TGV about that. Yeah, yeah, we did a video uh, <laughs> maybe a year or two ago yeah, on the urban industry. I, I, I admire Rolex. I, I, I've had plenty of opportunities to buy them. Mm -hmm. um, but I always kind of personally was more gravitated towards the more unique, the things that you don't see a lot of. But for the last few years, I've, I've really been desiring a vintage mm -hmm. uh, Submariner with uh, no date. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the, the domed crystal, the acrylic crystal and the drilled lug hole. So, so this one day I'll buy one of those. But, you know, when I look at spending eight or nine thousand dollars, you know, that's what they're going for here in the U.S. Then I think about the collections or the watches I could buy and to put into watch gauge inventory for the same money. Mm -hmm. At this stage of my life, it, it's more it makes more sense to keep the business better. Yeah. Uh, but some at some point. At some point, I will buy that one. What is your favorite watches? Uh, it's it's for me. I, I get that question a lot. Do um, you mean you mean favorite of all time favorite or right of now? All time. Well, I, I have two. Um, one of them I own. One of them I used to own, and I will own again. The one that I own uh -huh. is a Louis Monet, um, and it's a watch that I had done. I designed it for a client. We made 20 pieces, uh -huh. and and at the end of the project, he gifted one to me. It's part of your design, right? Yes. So I was con I was I was hired by a client to design a watch to mm -hmm. to um, to celebrate a big milestone in their business, and it's a major major corporation. All right, it's number two. Yeah. So I owned it. Um, and I sold it as part of trying to raise funds, raise money to build my business. Mm -hmm. uh, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph, but mm -hmm. it was four, uh, the 39 millimeter. Yeah. So I'm not a fan of the offshore because to me it's way too big. Um, the current Royal Oak Chronographs are 41 millimeter. Yeah, right. The one that I owned was 39 millimeter, and it was just perfect in every exactly. way. It's blue? Yes. I know you love blue. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a blue guy, so yeah. yeah you're, you're uh, a blue yeah. guy, I know. Anyway, yeah. John. Right, so how about the micro brand? I mean, what is the micro brand, your favorite micro brand that you still wear until today, day-to-day -to -day basis? So I love I love so many of the micro brands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as, as, far as a, a particular style and design, mm -hmm. the Formex essence at this point is, to me, just absolutely stunning. I think the Formex Essence is probably the nicest watch made under three thousand dollars. I agree, um, with you. and it's just the, the finishing, the polishing, and, right. and everything. And the and the, not to even mention the innovation and technology. Right. The watch is stuff. So that certainly is one of them. As a brand, NTH is probably probably one of my very favorite micro brands mm -hmm. because I think Chris does an amazing job at. Taking an homage or taking a, a design that he, you know he took inspiration of from fifty and sixty years ago in the old Tudor subs, mm -hmm. but but he's made them very very different with the different dial executions and right. different bezel and hands, you know. And as a guy who's who who sells NTH, mm -hmm. I never have problems with them. They're everybody loves them, and it's just it, to me, it's yeah. it's got to be my favorite uh, brand. You have special edition of Watch Couch. I mean, the exclusive edition, yes. right? Yeah, I do. So I have the Nizar yeah. So the Nazario collection is this is from the Subs collection, right? And it, every Nazario has a California dial. So it's yeah. got the. Uh, I've done four of those. The first Nazario I did, I think, fifty pieces. The second one was the Nazario Suaro, which is the Suaro, white yeah. one, which is a full bloom dial. Um, then we did the Nazario Azura, which is the blue one, the which blue happens one. to be my favorite one. I actually have one here. I'm gonna so take the one. Azura happens to be my favorite. I'm gonna take one. Okay, and then uh, and then we did the ghost, which the ghost is really cool because it's a black. Right? The, yeah, so it's black, and all the printing on the dial is white, but it's it's like the frame. It's a, the frame of the nu numerals. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. The loom on that is bananas. It's so cool, and as a matter of fact, I'm down to my last one or two of the Nazario mm -hmm. Ghost. I'm almost sold out of those. Ah, uh, so which yeah. one I should go? The blue or the ghost? Go with the one you love. Man, it's confusing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for blue with 
bit of rice. That beads of rice bracelet Man, is absolutely perfect. Spotty. I mean, I'm not a bracelet guy. You know that. I like straps. Um, but as far as the look goes, the beads mm-hmm. of rice is fantastic. Exactly. And, uh, and personally, the Nazario Azuro, the blue one, mm-hmm. is my favorite NTH that NTH has ever made. I think the, I think the color combinations are absolutely perfect. aesthetically perfect. Mm-hmm. Do you have any plan, John, to make your own brand? Uh, you know, that's something that always comes to my head and I think about. Mm-hmm. And I have to be honest, I'm not creative enough. You know, and people have said to me, if you were to make your own watch, what would it be? What would it look like? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, what comes out of my head is the same thing that, you know, it's something that already exists. What is um, that? I don't know how I could possibly make a brand or a watch that's any different than something else that's out there. I don't have that ability to to come up with something unique, unfortunately. I'm not that creative. <laughs> so, you know, like in my head, the perfect watch for me, if I were to create my own brand, when it finally comes out of my head, it's a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms uh, copy. Oh, that one, yeah. man. I think and, I, I, it was it was the brand. Homages to yeah the Fifty Fathoms. Uh, but if the, I still remember Hemel, Helsin, I don't know if Hemel did, but I know Helsin did. Yeah, Grupo Gamma. Yeah, Grupo's Grupo's was, was similar, but it wasn't that close. In my opinion, yeah. Naoki's one of the great designers in the micro brand space. He could take inspiration from other watches, yet make them very different. Is yeah. that too expensive? No, no, it's not too expensive. But for me personally, it's too big. Yeah. John, uh, speaking about homages, you know, um, what is your opinion? That's a debatable topic. How about right. you? I think it's really comical that, you know, I spend a lot of time in the watch groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And there's always arguments between guys. Oh, well, it's, that's a copy. That's an homage. It's a this. It, yeah. And everybody, everybody has their own idea of what the word homage means in the watch mm-hmm. space. I'm, I'm very happy with watches that take inspiration from something that came before them. Because if you think about it, Mm -hmm. everything had its inspiration, right? Like the, the Nautilus was inspired by the Royal look. I mean, it was the same designer, uh, Gerald Genta, but you know, and and there's, if you look back in history, every watch was an inspiration from something that came before it. And the first watches were inspirations from pocket watches. And those were inspirations from clocks. So I'm great with, I'm great with something being an homage in the terms of it having ins- be inspired by. Mm-hmm. What I don't personally love is when you look at a watch and it looks like an exact copy yeah. of something else. I call it lazy uh, homage. Do you agree with me? It's very lazy homage. Right. Don't, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I know that there are guys out there who love buying, and I, I don't want to yeah. say names of brands, but buying a watch that looks identical, identical to, let's say, a Batman, you know, a Rolex Batman mm-hmm. or, a, or you know, something of that nature or some mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm also not the guy to ever look at somebody who, who buys something and says that's wrong. I just don't. People have their own inspiration yeah. of why they love watches, why they buy them. So yeah. God bless them. Please buy them. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me personally, I think that you need to be a lot less lazy um, as a brand or as a designer. You need to have something that's at least a bit different. Exactly. You're right. I agree with you. Like, yeah. Uh, Boulder. What do you think about Boulder? I love Boulder. I mean, first the of most, all, the guys, the, the, most, the, the most, team over at Boulder mm-hmm. are great, great people. Mm-hmm. And I think there's an example of a brand. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't do much homaging? They, yeah. you know, if you look, if you look at the Odyssey, it's a very unique design. If you look exactly. at the Expedition, you know, it's it, it's done very unlike any other watch visually than anything else. So, uh, and I've I've always done great business with Boulder here in the United States, and yeah, I, um, I saw so. It's a great team. I mean, they, they yeah. do have uh, their own character. They, they're just great. They definitely they definitely are unique. I mean, right. You know, they if, if right now there's nothing else out there that I think looks like an odyssey. All right, John. John, before I ended up this video, just tell me your uh, honest opinion about micro brands. I got into the micro brand space and and started Watch Gauge mm-hmm. 
because I think that for a very affordable price, mm -hmm. they offer so much to a watch co collector, a watch consumer, a watch buyer. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if, if you're the kind of person that normally would spend five or ten thousand dollars on a watch, those same people now might mm -hmm. spend five thousand on seven or eight watches in mm -hmm. the micro brand world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're also, I think, they're great for the younger uh, watch buyer. If you think about it, I, me I remember. You know, a handful of years ago when the smartwatch was coming out and the Apple Watch, everybody said, oh, it's going to kill the watch industry. I mm -hmm. think what Mike brands have done is given access mm -hmm. to a lot of folks who aren't in the a position to spend two or three or five thousand dollars on a watch. Now they can spend three or four or five or six or seven mm -hmm. on a really well made, really desi well designed watch. I think and I think micro brands um, are only just beginning. Yeah, I think that uh, I think there's a very very bright future in in the world of watch micro brands. Right, there's huge rooms to grow. Not only, very much I mean, worldwide. I'm talking about worldwide, especially in here in Indonesia. You presented well. That's what I see. Yeah, you know, I, I spent so long. I spent 15 years in a in a traditional store where I got to deal with my clients face to face. Mm -hmm. You can't really do that yeah. online. So that's mm -hmm. why I have the YouTube channel and I do the videos to try to explain the watches. Mm -hmm. But it also, more importantly than that to me, I believe that it gives people who are buying watches for me and watching my YouTube channel a sense of I'm a regular person. I'm a regular guy, just like just like everybody buying from me. Right. I love right. my watches. I love, you know, just, I, it's not it's not a business or a corporation with nobody yeah. behind it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great approach. As far as I can see, you you run another channel, right? What is the the other channel? Uh, watch, it's watch, watch with, us, with right? us. I look at, and there's some great ones out there, and mm -hmm. and you know whether it be the Urban Gentry or the Time Teller or one of the many many others. Bruce Williams is fantastic, and and Random Rob. Random Rob. Right. And I I look at a lot of these channels, and I'm think I think well they're doing an amazing job, and I love what they're doing. However, usually it's one person, one mm -hmm. host. And they usually talk about a certain segment of the watch industry. Yeah. And I kind of was thinking to myself, well, I have I have all these friends or people I've become friends with who want to contribute and want to be on YouTube and want to share their passion and their knowledge. So I was thinking, well, what if I take all of these people, we make one channel, mm -hmm. and anybody can to contribute to the channel and send videos in mm -hmm. that we will put up. My thought is if we have multiple hosts or multiple personalities – Yeah covering multiple like all of the watch industry so we'll cover we'll cover the seiko and the timex and the bullet and things like that we'll cover micro brands we'll cover the mid-range the high end we'll do reviews we do interviews mm -hmm. um and i thought well we probably have a broader audience that we can reach if right. we offer a lot more than any other channel mm -hmm. so a friend of mine has a has an instagram called watch with me i said to him i said well gee anthony um I said, I like the name. I said, what if we name the new channel Watch With Us? Because there's many of us. He's like, right. it's brilliant. So that's that's really what we... How hot are you about to be in that channel? So you and I will chat. We'll discuss what... I, I think it would be interesting to get a perspective from from Asia yeah. and the Asian watch community. Right. Um, you know, and, and maybe we'll do something where you can be our Asian correspondent. Exactly. If I'm eligible? Yes, for sure. Carry on with my yeah. broken English. <laughs> no, it's it's perfect. It's it's no, great. No, 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 you have no, no, no. excellent anyway. English. You know, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I follow you since your first videos. I follow your website. Uh, I bought some of your the watches from you, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, you you start the YouTube channel, right? I I follow it. I follow every step of you. Even the brand I work with, if you if you see the pattern, pretty much the same. Are you okay with that? Yeah, no, I'm I'm flattered and, and I'm very proud of your success. I'm happy for you. Thank you, John. I mean, at the end, uh, it's it's late now. You have to go home. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you have to go home. Hopefully, uh, the guys that asked me the question, who is the guy inspired you and inspired Time Indo to start in Indonesia in terms of micro brand? This is the guy. I mean, this is John Cale. And uh, my personally, I have to thanks to you, John, for everything. Without you, teach me. You know what I mean? The, the words that I still remember from you is show your passion 
to people yeah. and people will follow you. That's what yeah, I, I a friend a friend of mine used to tell me that he'd say, John, you're you're passionate for watches. Your passion for watches mm-hmm. is contagious. And it makes everybody else around you passionate about watches. And and that's I think that's pretty much what I told you. And the fact that you're doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and you're you're telling me this makes me even happier than you can imagine that mm-hmm. you know Aside from me being able to live and do my do my dream here and build a business around something I love, mm-hmm. the fact that I've inspired you to do that and and to build something successful on your own, uh, it brings me a lot of joy. It brings me thank really you. a lot of joy. Again, thank you very much. One of my inspiration, you know, in terms of my brand. And thank you for uh, giving me this whole things about horology. If I didn't know you, I probably not get in touch with the micro brand. Uh, in this video, I will personally say thanks. Well, thank you as well. And thank you. You, I pre- you have something to say for Indonesia people? Yeah, listen, follow Adrian. He he's he knows what he's talking about. His passion will turn into your passion, everyone. And uh, and I want to thank you, Adrian, for giving me the opportunity to sure, to, John. You know, be in, be introduced to your audience. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, jump check out the Watchgate YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, I've got a I've got a good Instagram and uh, and also check out the Watch with Us channel. So Watch with Us, all one word. Trust me, this was a lot of fun and yeah. uh, it, and certainly fantastic to get to speak to uh, your your subscribers and your viewers. Right. And you know, it's, this is what I love to do. This is. <laughs> I said earlier, it's it's the people within the watch industry, uh, yeah. it's the people around watches that that make me love this, and um, being a fan of watches and collecting watches and loving watches mm-hmm. is much more than just about watches. It's about the people that we meet and the people we converse with and um, people we become friends with. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, if it wasn't for watches, mm-hmm. there's no way I'd be speaking to you all the way around the world right, right now. You know, watches are a lot more than a tool that's on your wrist to tell the time. It, right. it really does bring people together. And, and I agree thank you guys. You. I agree with you, John. All right, John. It's time to go home for you. Time to sleep for yes, me. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So have a great night. It was night. a great thank chat. You. It was a great talk. It's you know, not hopefully enough. We'll do this again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do another video after this. Thank you so much, John. Anytime. Have a great day. Anytime. You right. too. Have thank you, day. Adrian. Yeah. Thank you All so right. much. Cheers. Bye-bye.